had to make a list of favorite childhood memories. One of them might be the first time you set foot in Connie Mack Stadium and marveled at the sight of an emerald green playing field and an outfield wall festooned with advertising posters. The stadium, originally known as Shide Park, hosted the American League Athletics and later the National League Philly in 1909 through 1970. The NFL Eagles also called it and played the 1948 championship game there. Shine Park also hosted political conventions and other events in its 62-year lifetime. It was the nation's first concrete and steel ballpark, built for the princely sum of one million dollars. For all of that, Shine Park fit neatly into the fabric of its North Philadelphia neighborhood. That's a fact that architect and planner Leon Clemmer should know all too well. His grandfather, Joseph Steele, who built the place. It was a community. It was a community of Shy Park. The players, the groundskeepers, everybody knew everybody. They walked to the park, they played together, they, re, re, they went to the same... The churches were right, down, right around the community. This is the great thing about the way the industrial Philadelphia was. It was the same as any big industrial building. It was a place of work, it was a place of play, and people congregated around it. The people that worked there lived there. When they coined the term friendly confines, they meant Wrigley Field in Chicago. But they could have had Shy Park in mind. The sight lines were excellent in Shy Park. No matter where you sat in the main stadium, the seats, the main stadium, you had tremendous sight lines. You could see that ball field. It was built for baseball. Dave Roof used to break windows on 20th Street with some of his home runs and would launch some of his shots over the roofs. The neighborhood setting was so cozy that relief pitchers would sometimes drop by the local tap room in uniform for a spot of liquid refreshment during slow ball games. In the late 20s and early 30s, when the A's sported some memorable World Series teams, neighbors across the right field wall on 20th Street capitalized on the demand for series tickets by building bleachers on their roofs and admitting fans for half price. They'd send their children to local vendors to buy hot dogs for a nickel and resell them to their rooftop fans for a dime. Business boomed for these neighborhood entrepreneurs until 1935, when stadium co-owner John Scheib decided he couldn't endure the competition any longer. He erected a 38-foot addition to the right field fence, blocking the view from across 20th Street. The rooftop bleachers were put out of business. The Phillies' greatest success in their Connie Mack Stadium years came during the era of the Whiz Kids of the late 40s and early 50s. A charter member of the Whiz Kids was Richie Ashburn, who achieved fame with the Phillies first as a player and later as a broadcaster. I'll tell you what, what impressed me about Connie Mack Stadium the first time I walked into it was the number of people. There were about 35,000 people there. It was a sellout. I had never seen that many people in one spot before and that, I mean the, the awesome size of it and the noise of all those people I had uh, I grew up in Tilden, Nebraska population around a thousand just the the noise and the size and, and the beautiful uh, playing field was, was very impressive to me that's one of the, one of the most uh, uh, that was one of the best moments, I think, in my major league career, really, was that first day in the Connie Mack Stadium. I was a center fielder, of course. It was a perfect outfield for a center fielder. It was huge. Center field could cover a lot of ground, so I had a lot of room to roam. And, and once again, the grass out there was, was just manicured. Uh, you, you could charge a ball without fear of, you know, a bad hop. And uh, it was... Probably the best outfield for a center fielder in the league at that time. Our groundskeeper used to build up the line a little, the third base foul line a little bit for me. So the bunt that went down that line wouldn't roll foul. And, and some people would think that's cheating. I'll tell you what it was. It was equal time because when I went on the road, they did just the opposite. They built... The line so it tapered so the ball would roll foul. For all of the Whiz Kids, 
Their most exciting experience at Connie Mack Stadium was the 1950 World Series against the powerhouse New York Yankees. It was a great thrill because there hadn't been a pennant one in Philadelphia uh, since 1915. And of course, in 1950, that was 35 years later. It was, it was certainly the highlight of all our careers. We and we were young. We were called the Whiz Kids, and we were all young. I was only, I think, 22 years old then. And uh, one of the oldest guys would have been Dal Ennis, who may have been 25 or 26. So uh, we we. Uh, it was disappointing in that we lost four games in a row to the Yankees. Our club was really beat up. We, we, won, we won the National League pennant uh, in uh, Brooklyn on the last day of the season. Now, the Yankees in, in the American League had clinched their pennant, I think, about two or three weeks ahead of the time. So they were strong and well-rested and chomping at the bit, raring to go. We didn't get blown out of those games. We lost the first game one to nothing. Uh, we lost the second game two to one in ten innings when Joe DiMaggio beat us, beat Robin Roberts with a home run uh, in the tenth inning. We lost the third game three to two, and I think the last game was, that we lost in Yankee Stadium, I believe the score was five to three. I should remember that, but I don't. But it was. Uh, it was a great thrill, but it was very disappointing. And I think the greatest disappointment of all was the fact that we never won again. Ultimately, it was the transportation that killed that site. You remember as well as I do. You would park. You would have some little guy come up and say, Hey, watch your car. Yes, you give me $5. It was a real con job. If you didn't pay it, your car was... It was a terrible thing, but they didn't have enough parking. That's why it was moved. It was the transportation that made the site originally. It's a, it's a funny analogous that uh, one thing made it and then the same thing killed it. County Mack Stadium opened its doors for the last time on October 1st, 1970, with the Phillies entertaining the Montreal Expos. Thousands of fans began lining up hours beforehand, and they had more than the game on their minds. And I think the, the reaction by the fans not after the game, after the game, but even during the game. This It started maybe the sixth or seventh inning. You know, people said, hey, I'd like to get a souvenir out of here. By the sixth inning of the game, the sounds of ad hoc demolition could be heard all over the stadium. And when the Phillies finally won the game in the bottom of the tenth inning, all you know what will be. And all of a sudden, everybody is ripping the seats apart. And maybe where we were, way up there on top, was the safest place to be right then. And I thought, well, uh, yeah, what, what are they going to do about this? I mean, the place, is, the place is being literally torn apart right before our eyes. And I thought, these people are crazy. And then I looked down and saw my two sons down there <laughs> ripping off a seat. And I, believe it or not, I still have that seat. Let's take another look at that play on instant replay. It takes four seconds from the moment the winning run is scored for the kid to get his mitts on home plate in a futile bid for the ultimate souvenir. You'll see how quickly he realizes that the plate is firmly secured in the dirt and decides to grab the next item that isn't nailed down. By the time it was all over, souvenir hunters had taken seats, bats, gloves, baseballs, the sod, snack tins from concession stands, even toilets and sinks from the restrooms. It was an inglorious farewell for a grand old park. And even Saturday was to come for Old Shine Park. In August 1971, vandals broke into the stadium and set a small fire just for the thrill of it. The blaze spread and claimed much of the steel support, the roof, and the decks along third base. Connie Mack Stadium, once hailed as the largest and most perfectly appointed baseball grounds of the world, had become a derelict, fit for habitation only by rats. The wrecking ball finally put it out of its misery in 1976. Today, the site has found new life as the home of the 5,000-seat Deliverance